Welcome to this, uh, this uh, little lecture. Uh, it is New Year, New You. Um, and uh, just wanted to say welcome to everybody. Um, if uh, we've not met, my name is Dr. Brian Royer. Um, I absolutely love trying to help people realize and set their intentions and their goals and trying to achieve them and just make it so that it is not just for this new year, but hopefully it's going to be for life. So a little bit about myself. Uh, like I said, my name is Dr. Brian Royer. I'm a board certified functional neurologist. I also am certified as a uh, I have a specialty in sports medicine as well. And then I have a bunch of other certifications and a whole bunch of alphabet soup with uh, different credentials and different stuff behind my name with a uh, corrective exercise specialist and other kinds of stuff. And obviously I continue to work on it and uh, um, expand and try to be able to do more stuff. But, um, you know, if we have any, if you have any questions during our time together, uh, feel free to obviously uh, go ahead and post them. Um, I'll try to respond uh, quickly, and obviously, um, eventually, this is going to get up on YouTube, so if you have any comments, uh, you can go ahead and post them below. So, uh, basically, I have a bunch of different sources. Um, I will try to get them uh, posted. I'll go ahead and post them here um, in the group chat uh, for everybody so that they can see where I got some of the, um, some of the different things. But, um, you know, I'll also try to get some of these posted as well when it comes to YouTube and I'll post some of the links up just so that you guys should be able to have that. So basically, a uh, couple different things when it comes to this. The first thing to talk about here is motivational mantras. And basically, it doesn't really matter what your goal is for the new year. Um, the important thing is to make sure that you have a clear and realistic type of view for what types of things that you want to achieve. And again, this is not going to be something that happens overnight. So you have to try to give yourself motivation and you know increase your ability to self-motivate for different times when achieving your goal seems to be too much. So that's one of the reasons why uh, I want to do introduce the idea of having a motivational mantra. And again, this doesn't need to be any kind of a religious or a spiritual thing. If you want to, then great, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. Basically, the idea of having that mantra is to give yourself something to go back to, to hopefully give you something to motivate yourself. So again, it can be a word, it can be a phrase, something obviously that's specific to you that you could repeat um, to aid with your concentration, recentering your focus, those different types of things. So. Again, uh, Buddhists and Hindus uh, use them in prayer. Again, lots of top athletes are going to use them when they're trying to go through their training. Uh, multiple different successful entrepreneurs have used them to expire them to start their day. And again, you can use them and you can put them um, in something like Todoist and use that um, as, as something to just make sure that you're checking off every day that you're doing it. Um, you can put it in your calendar. You can um, have something that is in a sticky note or any of those different kind of things. Or you can put them, you know, in your wallet in order to try to, to try to make sure that you do it. And you put it in your phone, put it in your wallet, put it in a sticky note, put it up on your mirror. Again, something where you're going to see it so that every time that you pull that thing out or do whatever, then, you know, it's the background on your phone or whatever. So it gives you the ability to help kind of motivate yourself like at any point. So obviously the first thing that you have to do is you have to choose a mantra. It can be from anywhere. You can um, look up success mantras or you can look up motivational mantras or different stuff like that. And it, it, once you pick a couple of them, maybe that, that you might like, but really it's about writing it down and it can be different stuff at different times of the day or for different types of goals or for different things that you know you need to help with the motivation. So, but you need to write it down and you have to place it somewhere visible, like I said. So your phone and a wallet and your sticky note, like, or on a sticky note, um, any of those different things. So a couple of different examples that you could be would be like, if you want to achieve greatness, stop asking for permission or have big dreams, you'll grow into them. 
or don't be afraid to be great. Or the one that I like uh, for myself would be don't wish for it, work for it. Because sometimes I need to make sure that I'm not being lazy, right? So it's basically, it's you know, it, it depends on you. It depends on um, what your goals are. And nobody can really tell you what is going to be the best thing. But that's going to be something that you're going to have to spend a little bit of time and think about as to what it might be able to motivate you. So um, obviously, uh, at this point in time, you know, there, you know, this is the beginning of the year. So we're just over a week into the new year. Um, you know, this is the, the time of year when um, the gym is absolutely packed. Um, after this webinar, I'm going to the gym. I've been going to the gym but it's definitely going to be packed and there's going to be a whole lot more people there um, in these first few weeks of the year compared to what there is usually. And again, everybody that goes to the gym on a regular basis knows that that first couple of weeks, you know, a bunch of people get motivated and then it lasts a few weeks and then it goes away. So the idea is, is that you need to make sure that you're taking that responsibility in order to make sure that you are, you know, doing what you need to do in order to change things because again change is going to be hard um, again making sure that it lasts is going to be really really difficult so you need to have a lot of support but you have to make sure that you take responsibility for your own path and again it can be hard but again it, you need to be able to come to terms with your own sense of autonomy you have to realize that the only kind of power that you have over anything is the ability to change things in your own life so, and again, doing so can open up a lot of doors, but you have to be willing to put in the work. And again, if you're not willing to put in the work, then nobody else is going to do it for you. So, um, again, whatever it might be, you know, if you have a goal, the likelihood is, is that you making sure that you achieve that goal is going to be worth it. So again, you have to take personal responsibility um, and you have to uh, kind of go from there. So. Um, when it comes down to it, uh, you know, and again, some people will feel this way, you know, when it comes to this quote, some people won't, but our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that frightens us, uh, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. What it comes down to is, is that, you know, you should feel that you're worth it in order to achieve success. So it's not about like, you know, like what business do you have being successful or getting what you want? You know, you need to realize obviously that it's worth it for you to be successful, to get what you want, for you to achieve your goals and obviously to be proud of yourself. And again, nobody's going to do it for you. You have to make sure that you're putting in the work in order to actually achieve the goals that you might want. You can't just, you know, wish it, you have to actually like, you know, work in order to get there, which is why I like the mantra that I like. Um, but again, you, you do have every right to be proud of yourself. You have right to strive to be happy and, you know, to be, you know, happy with what's going on with you. Again, as happy as you can be, because obviously there are some situations or some instances that you can't really change, but you have the right to be happy. So again, you shouldn't be trying to, you know, let other people belittle your achievements or, you know, you should make sure that you are trying to work as good as you can or as, as well as you can in order to um, you know, be proud of what it is that you're doing. So hopefully, you know, you can allow yourself to do that. Again, that uh, the, this slide here is going to you know, apply to many people may not apply to you as much, but again, you know, it, it's, it, it's definitely worth it to actually like believe in yourself. And you know what, the, this is one of those kind of things that I, I, I also like to just kind of mention when it comes down to it for things like this, even if you're not completely there yet, act like it, right? fake it till you make it. And there's neurology and there's different kind of things that, that show that even if you don't believe that you're there, if you act like you're there again, acting like you're proud of yourself in other, in front of other people, then it's one of those kind of things that eventually you can actually get there 
from the standpoint of firing different areas of your brain can actually help you get a little bit closer. So there's a lot of different things that kind of comes down to it. So again, one of the strategies is, is that you can use is to tell somebody what it is that you're trying to do. So again, telling somebody that, you know, what it is that you're trying to do um, and getting a buddy in order to help you to have support is going to be an excellent strategy. So again, obviously it shouldn't be somebody who is problematic for you or anything like that. And the person shouldn't be judgmental. They shouldn't try to hinder what you're trying to do or try to influence your progress. But again, be maybe a sounding board or different, somebody that you can, that can help you measure up to your goals. So again, saying it out loud is important. Saying it out loud to someone else um, can help you to turn that wish that you have into a reality by helping you to actually work to get it, it, it out into, you know, in, into the world. So, and again, this is one of the reasons why you write things down, but that simple act of telling somebody about your goals can help you to encourage to continue at times when you're, you know, maybe a little bit tempted to quit. So, you know, you don't want to go back on your word. So this is one of those things where sometimes you can use social media for something like this to put it out there. You know, when you post that your goal is to, you know, lose 20 pounds or whatever it is, or, you know, do whatever your goal is. If you're posting it out there on social media, then other people see it. Some people might even be asking you about your goal. You know, if you're giving updates and stuff like that, other people might be interested in, in what's going on there. So again, there's a multiple different things that you can do when it comes down to it, but that's just, uh, again, something to kind of pay attention to. Again, there's going to be no such thing as quick fixes. <clears throat> so um, when it comes down to it, um, you have to have the, the stamina. You have to have grit, basically, in order to basically power through. Again, you can call it willpower. You can call it determination. But again, this is going to be um, part of uh, making sure that you, you know, can achieve the goals is to try to stick with it. Um, again, you should be looking at this like it's a marathon rather than being a sprint. However it is that you want to call it, again, the goals are going to require dedication. And again, you have to have that desire to succeed. So, but again, it just doesn't happen on, on its own. You're going to have to definitely work for it in order to get what it is that you want. So again, the what, why, when, this is trying to get down and actually like clarify your goals. So again, you need to be able to do a little bit, you know, in order to get your, your focus a little bit better. So again, the challenge for doing something like this is to try to use as few words as you can to explain your what, your why, and your when. You want to know what your goal is. You want to know why you want to achieve it. What's the motivation that's there? And, you know, when you aim to do so. So those are a couple of things you can get a little bit more than that. But again, you want to, um, you know, save up enough money in order to travel in, you know, September this year um, or get a promotion by such and such a date or lose a specific number of pounds, um, you know, but really you want to make sure that you're being specific when it comes down to it. So many people have heard of goals and they've heard of uh, like the, the, the classic kind of thing is making sure that your goals are smart. I usually talk about making sure that you have smarter goals, which we'll, we'll go through that in a second. But, um, but basically, the, the, they're pretty much they're the same thing. And there's a couple of different variations on what you make the letters stand for. But when it comes down to it, S in smart is going to be specific. So you need to make sure that you're specific on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. You don't want it to be wishy-washy. Like, you know, something like having more energy is not going to be something that's really specific. You need to try to, you know, get that to be, um, you know, like, again, a little bit more precise. And some of this by making, hitting some of these other things in SMART is going to help you out. So again, something would be measurable. Again, if something is measurable, then you can, um, you know, th then it's a little bit easier to, again, write down and quantify it, make sure that you know when you've actually hit it. Again, you also want to make sure that the, you know, the A in SMART 
again, this can be different for the way that different people put this, but I'm looking at it as action oriented. You know, it's going to be something that you're doing, you know, again, something that you are, you know, you know, whether or not it's, you know, you could be saying that you want to lose 20 pounds, but you know, if your goal is to work out five times a week for 30 minutes, then again, that, that is like the action part of it is the goal is to lose it. But again, you want to lose 30 pounds by working out, you know, three times a week and have like your nutrition, you know, fix that up and different stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to the goal itself, the goal needs to be realistic, but it needs to scare you a little bit. So it's a little bit of both. Like if the, if the goal is too easy to achieve, then when you get it there, you don't get that like little endorphin rush that you get the, you know, from like checking something off. So you need to have like, you know, the goal be realistic, but again, this is something where you have goals, but you can have sub goals or you can have like underneath goals. So maybe the goal is eventually that you want to lose, let's say 70 pounds or something like that. But if you're breaking it up into chunks and you say that I want to lose, you know, 20 pounds over the next 20 weeks, then that's going to be something that's a smaller goal that's going to be there or something that's underneath that is to say, okay, now I want to make sure that I'm working out three days a week. And then after a little, after a certain period of time, be able to, you know, move to four days a week, or I want to be able to jog for five minutes straight without having to take a break. So again, it depends on the person and the issue um, and, and going from there. The T in SMART ends up being time bound. So the, the time, that's the when portion that you have of this. So that's, you know, when is the goal? When is it that you need to be done with achieving that goal? Um, the thing that might be different than people might not have heard before is the ER part of it. So the SMART-er would be, E would be evaluate. So you have to evaluate where your goals are. After a certain period of time and that time bound kind of a thing, you need to evaluate what your goals are and then you might need to revise them. So it's making sure that you're going back and taking a look at your goals, seeing whether or not they were realistic or whether or not they were just too easy and trying to push yourself a little bit. Again, having those micro goals or like the ones that are um, a little bit easier to achieve and a little bit more um, something that you might be able to see, that could be maybe a good idea for you to, you know, again, you're working on those, but you have a larger goal in mind down the road. So those are some of the ways that you can actually work on your goals. So um, with going through this class, obviously you started and you want to try to use the resources that are available to you. So this is one of those things. So you're using a, a free resource that's here on the internet. So basically it's, you know, using the internet, using online expertise, using like-minded people to connect with. Um, resources that you might have on the internet, depending on what your thing is, is that there are, and I, and I don't remember what the, the site is off the, the top of my head right now, but there are sites that you can use that you can basically make small bets with yourself, where if you, you know, you bet yourself $5 that you will, you know, go to the gym, you know, uh, at least three times a week for the next month. And if you don't do it, then you lose the $5. But if you do do it, then um, some of them actually will have payouts to other people based on the other people that don't meet their goals. So it's, you know, obviously it's doing things on the honor system and other kinds of stuff like that. But there's, you know, definitely resources that you can have either on the internet or um, with other places that you might be able to do in order to help yourself out. So again, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do um, and other people that have done the things that you have wanted to do. So you can ask other people about what things that they've done in order to um, help. So what resources are available to you that you might be under using? Um, you know, something like, do you live close to a gym or a fitness center that you could join? Um, again, do you have a friend or a family member that's an expert in the field that you might be seeking to join or need some information from? Again, why not ask them for advice? Are you looking for a partner to join forces or forces with in order to, um, you know, do a business or do whatever? You know, do you need to network? Again, you got to find the different things of um, when it comes to networking or when it comes to other stuff, you need to make sure that you're putting yourself out there. Um, Again, if you're actively seeking what you want, that's going to really be the only way that you can achieve it. Um, 
so again, there's uh, there's multiple different things when it comes to those resources, but you need to um, you know do what you can. Um, when it comes to keeping it fresh, again, no matter what it is, you know, once you start getting into it, um, you you will have the tendency to things become routine, and then it ends up becoming um, not as exciting. So no matter what that goal is, as soon as you start implementing it. Um, again, you risk of becoming bored or complacent again as it becomes your new norm. So basically, you need to try to aim in order to um, you know do what you can. So an example would be aiming to eat healthier food. Um, again, if you end up eating the same food over and over again, and you have you know broccoli every Tuesday, um, you know again that lack of variation might not necessarily be enough in order to keep yourself motivated. So what it could be is that, um, you know, trying to find different ways to make it so that it's not monotonous. Um, again, other spices or other ways that you can actually make the broccoli or whatever it is. Um, you know, so when it comes to exercises, maybe not using those exercises every time that you go to work out. Or if you're running, not taking the same running route that you go every single time, go in a different way or go backwards or whatever it is. Again, you try to, um, you know, try to do what you can in order to avoid the monotony. So uh, again, there are so many different ways that you can get creative. Again, this is where you can use you know, resources like Google and stuff like that in order to help you achieve your goals. Um, again, there's multiple different versions and recipes for all of our favorite foods. There's multiple different places that you can go for a workout. Um, you know, again, even if you're going to, uh, your, uh, a restaurant or a cafe or whatever, even if you're sitting in a different spot, those kind of things can end up giving you a different kind of perspective. You know, if you don't sit where you sit every single time, or if you don't have the same foods that you always have, again, expanding the palate or doing different stuff, you know, th those can be things that can definitely be helpful. And again, the idea is trying to enjoy all of this stuff and not just endure or suffer through it. And again, the, uh, there, there's a good quote from Dale Carnegie that goes that people rarely succeed unless they have fun in what they're doing. And that's true. If you're not having fun and if you're not enjoying it, you know, and seeing results sometimes, then again, that ends up being kind of difficult. So making sure that you enjoy it ends up being kind of a big deal. So again, we talk about planning. So you have to keep things fresh. Um, again, you have to set a plan that lasts between two to four weeks. And again, when it comes down to this, again, you can have like long-term plans that go on for months and months and months. But again, this is having the plans of how you're going to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. So, um, you know, again, how far, you know, if you have, you know, 80 pounds to lose, you know, that's obviously not going to happen in two to four weeks, but you need to figure out what is realistic. You know, so saying, you know, one to two pounds a week is realistic. So, um, you know, anything that's more than that, it, you know, ends up becoming, you know, possibly a little bit dangerous. But for example, like if you go through and you're saying like, you know, weeks one to two, you start out with a strong pace and everything, you, you know, is clear and you're motivated and everything, you know, is everything um, is there. You need to make sure that you're planning out your week in order to do it. So it's planning out the weeks ahead of time. You know, so planning out weeks one and two, trying to go and then planning weeks three and four, just generally, obviously you have to tweak what you need to in order to get there. But taking time, you know, let's say on Sunday or whatever day it is in order to help to plan out your week, right? That's going to be part of it. You need to make sure that you schedule in time to plan and then actually plan. So you go and you choose your mantra, you decide on a meal plan. Well, once you decided on a meal plan, well, how are you going to figure out what your meal plan is? You know, it could be redundant type of stuff or not, but if it is, when are you going to go shopping, right? That's a big part of it. Like, again, a lot of times we have these, you know, uh, grand ideas of what we want to do when it comes to losing weight or doing different stuff. You know, when are you going to do the thing that you say that you're going to do? Because work's going to get in the way, friends, family, all that other kind of stuff. So basically, you know, you decide on your meal plan. Okay, go through and you pick out what you're going to have for your meals for the week, right? 
and again, you can make it easy by picking the same thing or having leftovers, stuff like that. Well, then what about the prep time? Are you going to be cooking the, the whatever meal it is? Are you going to cook that meal right before you're going to eat it? So every day you're going to wake up and you're going to cook breakfast? Or are you going to do something like planning your meal plan, planning when you're going to go shopping, planning your prep day for that? So you know, if it's the weekend, maybe your uh, planning day needs to be on Friday or Friday night or something like that. And then you go shopping on Saturday and then you do all your prepping for the week on Sunday and have everything divided up and have everything ready to go in the fridge for all of your different meals. Again, that's one way that you can go. Some people need that. Some, you know, obviously for some people that would maybe drive them a little nuts. But again, you need to decide on what you're going to do and set that intention at the beginning of the week. So book your classes for the week if you're going to be working out um, at like a, a local place. Like uh, I know that there are several places around here where you have to go online and actually schedule your fitness classes. So make sure that you get those thing, different things scheduled. Call and schedule a meeting with somebody that you're trying to network with. You know, go through and do those different steps and you know, make sure that you have plan and have your time in your schedule planned for when you're actually going to go and do some of those other things. So you, if you, you know, if your, your work time is uh, that you're going to be planning this out is going to be on a Sunday, you can't necessarily call a contact on Sunday to schedule something. You might be able to send an email, but that could be something that you plan time on Monday morning to make the call so that you can actually like try to set something up to meet somebody for networking later on. And again, this is your life. You, know, you need to make sure that, um, you know, that you are trying to do everything that you can in order to achieve your goals. So you have to make sure that you take that time to plan. Um, when it comes down to it, you know, there's multiple different things that people will talk about with, uh, you know, it takes 21 days to create a habit, um, you know, and that's pretty true, but it can take a little bit more than that. Um, you know, and it, but that third week is going to end up being extremely important on trying to make sure that you achieve the goal. And again, some of these things could be like stepwise. Maybe you're not trying to achieve all of the goals at once. Maybe you start week one and you're trying to achieve certain goals. And then week two, you add new things to it so that you're incrementally changing stuff as opposed to, so if somebody's diet consists of fast food all the time and that's all that they eat, it's gonna be kind of hard for that person to go from eating fast food and stopping at the, you know, in the morning and then you know, having a bagel and you know, doing all that kind of stuff. It's gonna be hard for that person to go from doing fast food every day to all of a sudden now doing like gourmet home cooked organic vegan meals or whatever it is that you're trying to do, you know, in one week, but you can try to take things and take them in steps. So you might be able to say, okay, well, I'm going to change breakfast and breakfast only, or I'm going to change lunch because that might be more controllable or maybe dinner is more controllable, right? Each of those different things, it depends on the person. So, um, but anyway, when it comes to the third week, week three is typically going to be the time when things get hard, right? That first week, you know, going gangbusters, you got the motivation. You finally decided that you're going to cut this food out or you're going to work out or you're going to do whatever it is. You know, in those first couple of times that you do it, okay, maybe it's not too bad, but now your workout in week three is getting a little bit harder and maybe you're a little bit sore from it or whatever. Two weeks you know, before had gone really well, but you know, you're, it's starting to wear on you mentally and you know maybe even physically depending on what's there there's a good quote that i like you know so you know, even if you don't practice yoga there's a quote from a guy named iyengar um uh, and he does iyengar yoga uh it's actually something that my wife does and my office manager but um iyengar yoga is a little bit different than regular yoga because in a lot of the other yogas people will go through flows so you'll hold one position and you'll do it for a shorter period of time and then you'll go into another one and you hold it for you know 20 seconds or a minute or whatever it is but angar is one of those things where it has the tendency to hold it for a little bit longer so you might hold a pose for like five minutes or something like that so what's interesting is is that you know the quote from him is the yoga pose begins when you want to leave it which I think is interesting. As soon as it gets hard, that's when the challenge is there and that's when it ends up being a mental challenge. 
And again, you need to try to push through when you get those thoughts, you know, like, um, you know, like you get the hump day thoughts, you know, again, Wednesday is the third day of the week, right? So again, the idea of returning to bed or just going, you know, back home and skipping your workout or whatever, again, it, it it's a lot easier to do um, when it comes to that third week, because again, things have become hard and you don't necessarily have quite the motivation that's there. Hopefully you're using your mantras and your other stuff. Um, and you can, uh, hopefully use that in order to overcome that likelihood of failing. But again, you got to work it out again, make sure that you're planning out week three, knowing that it's coming, trying to get a little bit more motivated. Um, you know, maybe get, extra support from people that that are there again look for the little things like for example here in my office when i'm treating people that are in pain you know they they look at pain and they say that they're not any better but maybe they're able to walk farther than what they were before because their you know back of their leg or whatever would bother them or they can stand for a longer period of time and then they'll be like oh well i'm not any better well but you're doing you know half of the housework when you're able to only, you know, do like an hour worth of it. Um, you know, it depends on the person and depends on that. So sometimes trying to look for the little things that you might've been able to do a little bit better, that might uh, be something that might be helpful when it comes to that motivation. Um, again, writing down those things that you're noticing can be helpful. Um, so again, when you see a shift, again, it's a good thing to, you know, write them down and notice like, oh, that's a little bit easier for me to do this. Or it's, you know, if you were having uh, trouble uh, walking from one place to another, like, oh, I didn't have to stop on that walk nearly as often as what, what I usually would, or I was able to complete it in, you know, um, you know, maybe two thirds of the time that it had taken me in the past. So there's just different things for, for you to notice. So making sure that you're paying attention to that week three, get that extra motivation and Hopefully you can push through. Um, again, the biggest thing to, to remember is that you have to be honest with yourself because we know, like we all know that the biggest person that's stop you from achieving your goals this year is going to end up being you. Again, it doesn't help if you don't have somebody who is a significant other who is like supporting you and all that other kind of stuff, but ultimately that rests on you. You know, it's easy to trick yourself into believing that you're doing things that are going to progress you forward when you're just, you know, going back and doing the same kind of practices or habits that got you there. Well, it's okay if I do a little bit of this because I was good or whatever. So you have to be aware and honest with yourself about whatever area of life that you're trying to improve. Um, if you are trying to, you know, like if you're going through and you're trying to um, look at your weekly goal and achievements and like whether or not you did them. Again, you have to be honest. Again, you can have like things actually written out and like when you're trying to plan everything out, you know, have your weekly goal and have what you do need to have in order to achieve the goal. You know, again, you review it, make sure that you're doing it. You don't necessarily need to share them with others. You don't need to shame yourself or anything like that. But again, this is for you. You have to be honest with yourself and honest where you're headed. Um, because you, know, you may not like what's in store for you if you don't, or you may just quit or you may do whatever. So you need to make sure that you are writing things down, right? So that's one of the things that's going to be part of it is that you have to write things down in order to make sure that you are accountable for your thoughts and your goals and your actions. Again, this is going to be something that can help to clarify your ideas. It can clarify your dreams, your intentions, and help to make them a little bit more achievable by actually, you know, making you move and engaging in writing. Again, this is going to be something that can help with motivation by writing it down because you can come back to it and remember what it is that you said that you're going to do for yourself. Um, and again, you can also, it can be possibly helpful with emotions and other thought patterns and other kinds of stuff like that. So there's a lot of different benefits to writing down your goals and going into them from there. Um, and, you know, I encourage you to do that because it should be able to help you um, do a little bit better with it. Again, writing it down, having a record, knowing what it is if you're there. So again, we're all going to struggle when it comes to trying to change something about ourselves. Um, again, the goal is to make sure that you are trying to do something that is achievable, but that it scares you a little bit. 
So when it comes down to it, sometimes the goal might be unachievable. Sometimes that might be something that you need to, you know, dial it back a notch. Like I said, when you evaluate and you revise the goals that you're talking about, but it might just be simply like your perception. It could be, might be actually what's going on, but it just could be that your perception is off and that you're actually close to achieving your goals, but you might need somebody else to take a look and see if you have actually like, you know, improved or if they've noticed improvement. So those can be some of the things that you can do. You know, maybe that the thing that was unachievable was the timeline that you put on it. Maybe that, you know, you said that you were going to lose 50 pounds in, you know, like two months. That's not realistic. So again, it's one of those kind of things where um, it, it just depends on the, the issue and, and everything else. But, you know, some things that you can do to help out. Um, again, you can have a to-do list. Okay, so what kind of things can you do right now in order to help you to ease what it is that you're doing and like decrease the amount of struggle that you have? Um, again, getting rid of social media can be something that can be extremely helpful. Again, this is a problem that we haven't really had, you know, as people in general, is that you get to see people on social media on their best days, right? When, you know, nobody is posting when they're frazzled and you know they're frustrated with their kids and they're yelling at them and doing all that other kind of stuff people are you know posting you know how they you know did super great so they bought a new car and they you know th this is the best day ever right and for everybody when they're posting stuff it's the best day ever the majority of people are not posting the things obviously that are going to be embarrassing and everything else so sometimes because social media ends up being a an unreal, unrealistic snapshot of what other people are saying, let alone any political or other kinds of stuff that might be on there. You know, it can be helpful to get rid of that social media so that you're not, um, you know, comparing yourselves, you know, maybe in an unfair way or wasting time, you know, when you end up having a difficult day. It doesn't need to be every day, but, you know, maybe if you're having a hard time, maybe you don't need to be seeing somebody, you know, when they're, on vacation when you know you have worked for 14 days straight or whatever it is right another thing that you can go back to is trying to you know exercise the muscle the you know in your brain of what is, what you're grateful for so making sure that you know you applaud yourself on how far that you've come on things that you have seen in yourself again talking to other people and seeing the things that they've seen and how far that you've changed can be extremely helpful. But again, it, you don't want to necessarily look at how far that you have to go still. But if you focus on the positive and say like, hey, I've already done this much, that's still a lot of work. That's way more work than what I would have done before. And everything is you know, going to be better because of that. Don't just focus on the fact that you, know, you still have you know, like another you know, 8K left over when it comes to your um, when it comes to your 10K marathon or your, your 10K race that you have that's going on. Um, again, try to do something that'll make you happy. Sing, dance, be silly, go nuts with your kids, do whatever. Try to get back to that lighthearted version of what, you know, what it was that was trying to make you do this challenge in the first place. You know, go after and try to motivate yourself. Try to, you know, get up and move and, you know, get your energy back. Um, again, just moving your body just in general, even if the goal itself isn't fitness oriented, again, movement ends up being a big impact when it comes to people's moods, right? So whether or not you want to or not, right, you know, again, this is, you know, the idea of like, uh, you know, the, the like I talked about before about the fake it until you make it kind of stuff. People talk about like the power postures and other kinds of stuff like that. Like what's the position that somebody gets into when they're Eeyore and they're sad and, you know, they're depressed and all that other kind of stuff. You know, you can imagine somebody kind of slumping down and, you know, like, oh, what was me and all that other kind of stuff. Well, the opposite version is what, what kind of position does somebody get when they win, win the race? right? When they, you know, show up first in the Olympics or, you know, if they found out that they won the match or whatever it was, you know, again, people are raising their hands above their head. They're, you know, throwing, you know, uh, you know, basically throwing their fist and, you know, like getting excited and, you know, like there, there's certain movements that people do. You'd be surprised 
at how even if you don't really feel that way to do some of those things can change your mood so we have and that's one of the things that we have in our brains is that we even have mirror neurons in our brains that will recognize what other people are doing and it helps you to kind of know how a person's behavior is or where that person is in their their mood by seeing what their movements are because we know you know we know what a smile does right and even if you don't want to smile again because there's those times even if you don't want to smile smiling will actually change your mood and it'll actually make you happier it's basically the version of you wagging a dog's tail and it making the dog happy right it's it's something that works it's something that's surprising that it works but it is something that's there and again with all of this stuff you can always start small you don't have to expect everything to just you know happen right away but it is baby steps and you want to try to you know keep working at it or remind yourself that you know it's not it doesn't come you know right away and it doesn't come all at once it trickles in and then usually it'll trickle in and then a lot of times you know, after it trickles, then it just like gets faster and faster and faster with how the, the changes start to come. Um, you know, music is one of those things that can also be motivational. So we talked about mantras, quotes, goal setting, planning. And again, this is another thing. Again, especially, you know, if you like music, if you do that, that's something that you can do. You know, we're not talking about mixtapes because it's not the 90s anymore but you can make yourself a playlist. So whether or not it's Spotify or YouTube or wherever, you can go through and you can find that music that gets you happy. You can, you know, again, if you have like Spotify premium or one of those kind of things, um, you know, or if you have, uh, you know, a bunch of music on, you know, still on like iTunes or whatever it is, you can organize that stuff into a playlist. And again, listen to it while you're trying to be productive or while you're exercising or different stuff like that. You can obviously go online and find um, lists of songs that are over 100 or 110 beats a minute if you're trying to exercise or work out or run or whatever. So um, you can also just go on some of those other sites that I was talking about like Spotify and YouTube and you can search for um, motivational music or a motivational playlist. But for a lot of people, it's actually gonna be best if they're creating one for themselves. So again, you know the songs that you like, you know, for me, there's some, you know, artists that come on that I just can't stand. So, you know, maybe it's going to be something that you might want to, you know, just make your own. Again, what kind of stuff is going to get your heart beating? What kind of stuff, you know, makes you sing along or bob your head or, you know, spikes that motivation? It could be the Rocky song, who knows, right? But try to make that playlist for yourself and, and go from there. So there's other things in the environment that can also have an effect on how you're doing. So again, music is something that can be a catalyst, but again, there's a bunch of other stuff. Um, so how's your room, right? Is, you know, are you constantly being like distracted by stuff that's maybe untidy or cluttered, right? So having an untidy room or a cluttered home environment, that can be something that can throw you off. So again, um, you can get old habits that are there. So making sure that you get rid of maybe old clothes or old possessions or items that you don't use or um, reminders of the old lifestyle that you had. Again, that could be stuff that you could clear away or you, you know, if you're not really ready to get rid of it completely, you can, you know, put it in a attic or a storage closet, or you can, you know, rent a space or rent a storage space if you absolutely need to, um, you know, but just to get it out of there and get you out of the habits that you used to be in. Um, again, especially when you're trying to make something that's more of a lasting change. Um, diet and exercise. Um, again, no matter what, you know, if you're trying to make a change, regardless of whether or not it's just to lose weight or any of the other kind of stuff, diet and exercise is going to be a part of it because of the fact that willpower is something that ends up being mentally training. So you can try to push yourself and you can have that grit and everything else that we were talking about, but you don't want your diet to suffer with it. And you also need to make sure that you are doing the things that you need to and not cutting corners to make sure that you're actually like, you know, making that effort. Exercise um, is something that will stimulate your brain and it allows you, well, it can obviously wipe somebody out, 
you know, you don't necessarily need to be doing exercises that are, you know, just crushing your soul, right? You can use exercise as something to uh, basically wake you up, perk you up. Again, doing that whole, like, you know, maybe cardio first thing in the morning can help you have a good day and, you know, work better and work harder and all that other kind of stuff. But same kind of thing, if you're, you know, have a horrible diet, again, it's going to be harder for you to actually like achieve and maintain those kind of goals that you, uh, that you're trying to shoot for. Um, again, environmental factors, personal relationships is obviously, that can be a tricky thing because again, we're not always sure what's going on, but you know, relationships can definitely help us, but you can also have situations where the, the relationship is going to hinder your progress and it might prevent you from hitting your goal. So, um, Again, you need to be open and you need to be honest about your goals with yourself, you know, the previous things that we've talked about. And again, um, being open and honest with your loved ones about what your goals are um, is going to be um, another way to cultivate a stronger connection with them, a stronger sense of support. And that's the way that it should be. Um, you know, again, it's a good thing to have somebody that's there that if something goes wrong, they can help you out. Um, again, it's a good thing to have somebody to celebrate with when you end up achieving those goals. So that is totally a win-win. So again, you got to think if there are any types of environmental factors or anything that's there that's holding you back. So other things that you can do to help with personal motivation is to have a story, to have a picture, have an image that's ready to present yourself uh, whenever you feel close to burning out. So whether or not it's that having that mantra and maybe having it, you know, folded up or a mission statement or any of those other kind of things and having it, you know, in your purse or in your wallet so that when you're, you know, fiddling around to try to get out your, you know, membership card to the gym or you know, whatever it is that you can, you know, see it and it can help to remind you of what you're trying to do to make a change because you're trying to make possibly external changes or not, but there's external motivation and those end goals can be good. But again, there's nothing like trying to, you know, get that, that, that personal sense of fulfillment that you get when it comes to uh, getting closer to achieving your dreams, your goals, and, and getting that success. So again, that's one of those kind of things that's there whether or not that motivation ends up being a picture or that's the before picture, um, or you have the after picture is like, you know, uh, the, the picture of like Ryan Reynolds shirtless or whatever it is. Um, you know, you can have that be your goal that you end up striving towards. So again, it depends on what your motivation is and it depends on whatever it is that's there. So, um, when it comes to diet and fitness, again, this is going to be one of the major things that happens with a lot of people is that uh, a lot of people are going to end up having the, um, you know, part of their goal ends up being diet and fitness. I could tell you it's definitely mine too. Um, so again, improve your diet, improve your fitness. So there's a, a couple of things that you can do in order to help to achieve that. So again, we talked about plans. We talked about goal sheets. We talked about you know, other kinds of stuff previously. So again, you need to make sure that you are aware of what's going on. Awareness is going to be critical to achieving those health related goals because every one of us is going to be really, really different. So again, your body type, you know, motivations, other previous illnesses or injuries, um, the successes or failures that you've had, all of those things are going to be things that can affect how well that you stick to it when it comes to diet and fitness. Again, cultivating body awareness is something that is going to be um, is going to be really, really important. So, um, you know, ideally, you know, making sure that you're aware of your body again when it comes to um, you know body type and all that is part of it, but it's also you know awareness of movement and other kinds of stuff like that. So, you know, sometimes it can you know. It can be a hard workout where you're trying to do a lot of stuff, but it, sometimes it can be something that, you know, again, it can end up being fun, whether or not you're taking like a, a dance type of a class um, or learning a new movement or trying to do Tai Chi or di something different like that. All of those different things are going to engage your body in a different way and make you 
use things that you haven't, you know, if you haven't done those on a regular basis, like if you've never thrown a kick and you start taking a kickboxing class, that's going to be something that's a little bit different. If you're a guy whose muscles and joints are really, really tight and you start doing yoga, again, that's cultivating an awareness of your body that is a good thing. It's a good thing from the standpoint of pain and other kinds of stuff. But again, all of that stuff has to be related to you. You have to you know, basically make sure that any weight loss or exercise or fitness plan has to be tailored to you and your lifestyle, right? If you've got three kids at home and they're all super young, then it might not necessarily work for you to decide, hey, I'm going to do all the training that I need to do to run a triathlon. Some people might be able to get away with it. Other people aren't. I know that I don't have the time to do that. So again, you need to make sure that you're doing what it is that, that you can. You have to be aware of the things that are out there now, because again, when you're talking about here at the beginning of the year, there's going to be all kinds of different advertisements and different people that are trying to get your money. Um, again, there's going to be all kinds of health related products and services that are going to be there, advertisements, and you need to basically try to figure out what you're getting into before, um, you know, you really like spend all your money with it, right? So um, ensure that you try to check those out, make sure that it's gonna suit your diet and your plan before you really get in there and start using them. Try to get recommendations from people that, um, that have done it before um, and get that personal experience of the other participants um, can be things that are helpful for you to make sure that, um, that, that it is gonna be something that is gonna work for you. So again, the important stuff about this is that you need to make sure that you're enjoying yourself. Um, you know, when, when it comes down to it, again, no matter what it is that, no matter what your New Year's goal is, um, no matter what it is that you want to achieve, you know, hopefully you can leave this class, you know, with the knowledge that um, you deserve to enjoy every moment um, that you have when you're working towards achieving that goal. Again, it can feel like a chore sometimes. Um, you can feel down, you can get negative, you can get disillusioned with everything. But again, trying to come back to the positive, um, trying to know that you have made progress with yourself and everything else, again, that, that's going to be something that's there. You have to go back to your intention. What is that motivation? Back to what your mantra is. What is the thing that, you, you know, that, that, you're, um, that you're working towards? Um, you know. And again, sometimes it can be just flat out, what kind of reassurances do you need from yourself to get back on track? You know, how is it going to get there? Um, breaking down those larger issues into the smaller and manageable steps are going to end up, is going to end up being super important. You need to realize that there is uh, change is definitely going to be possible. So um, there's a lot of different things that are uh, obviously things that you can work on. So hopefully, you feel good when it comes to this. Hopefully that you got a little bit of excitement going on. You know, maybe there's a little bit of stuff that's a little bit overwhelming with all this, but both of those are great things. You know, the, you know, it's not the, the you know, when you think about it in general, like anxiety and excitement, there's not really much difference between the two of them. One is just like, you know, basically kind of like a fear of the unknown. And the other one is basically the same kind of thing. Your body is doing the same thing. You have a your faster heart rate every, you know, like you're breathing faster. Um, you know, you get the butterflies in your stomach the same kind of way, whether or not you're excited about something or whether or not you're anxious. Sometimes it's your mindset that determines whether or not you're excited about it or whether or not you're anxious. So when it comes down to it, you're going to feel a little bit of both when you're trying to you know, work on this. Both of them, you know, the, the overwhelmed, again, as opposed to saying that you're anxious, if you're a little bit overwhelmed, again, that's still a good thing. Trying to take it and break it up into chunks is definitely going to be a good thing. So again, excitement can drive you. Those overwhelming, um, you know, feelings, again, can force you to take it a little bit more seriously. So again, hopefully your goals for the new year are going to add to a higher quality of life for not just you, but also your friends and your family. Again, maybe you can be the inspiration that somebody else might need in order to take some similar types of steps. Um, again, if you feel at any point that you need some help on this journey, then I would be more than happy to help. Um, again, the thing that comes to me from my business and all that is that a lot of times, especially when people are trying to get 
you know, healthier physically, you know, uh, they can push themselves too far and too fast. And that's something that I can help somebody dial back. But if I can help in any way, then I'll try to. And I love trying to help people um, take control of their life and you know, move on and get things to the next level. So, um, you know, we're basically all done here. So I appreciate the you taking the time to experience the class. Um, again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can post them in the chat or uh, eventually, like I said, this will be on YouTube and you can post a comment that's down below and I'll try to do that. Uh, but like I said, thank you very much. And, uh, um, and hopefully you had a good experience with this.